Richard, one of the stories that we've been following on the Lex column for a good while now, it feels like several years in fact at this stage, is this fight between the two oligarchs um, for control of Norilsk Nickel, this, this big Russian nickel producer. It's a, it's a big story, an important story, but quite a convoluted one. Let's just summarise where we stand at the moment. Okay, where we stand at the moment is that Oleg Deripaska's Ruzal, which is the Hong Kong listed aluminium producer, the world's largest, acquired 25% of Norilsk Nickel in 2008, pre-crash paid a whopping $14 billion mm. for it, and he's got the debt bill to go with that. And that is still hampering the whole of Roussel, this, this debt this debt frenzy, that mm. uh, debt-related um, things that he did. But in the other side, you've got uh, Vladimir Potanin, who runs in Teros, another Russian concern, and he owns 28% yeah. of, of Norilsk Nickel. The two have never quite uh, seen eye to eye mm. over who owns what. And, and of course, Roussel would love to have loads of dividends. That has never been quite as rich a payout as uh, might yeah. be wished for, and so it goes on. So the two have been at each other's throat, and they were about to have a court case this week in London. Now, uh, the latest development today is that Roman Abramovich, the man who owns Chelsea Football Club, <coughs> has just bought a 7% stake in, uh, in the company. <coughs> and this is being presented as a sort of way of ending the dispute between the two oligarchs. But I just wonder how the arrival of a, thir of a third oligarch can possibly solve a dispute yeah, between well, the two others. Two's company, three's a crowd. Yeah. And I think that there are two things here. One is Abramovich, um, <coughs> for all his, his Chelsea might and his ability to, to hire and fire managers, is, I don't think about to come and introduce a great deal of harmony, although mm. there is some <coughs> sort of thought to be, uh, there's thought to be some involvement of the Kremlin in this as, as a kind of and procurer of him as a solution yes, to bring I mean, this peace. Is very, this is a very large but Russian exactly. asset, obviously. But the, the, real thing, the real thing here is that there is a three-way shareholder agreement between these three Russian billionaires, and it does seem to provide, um, and we have no details yet, uh, to, to, for some kind of dividend stream over 2012 to 2014 at least. Mm. That's good for Roussel, whose shares are up today. It does provide for um, penalties if there's any more squabbling. So. The three have paid a uh, seven and a half percent each into, or seven mm. point something percent of the equity each into an escrow account, and if anyone misbehaves, the, misbe the mis miscreant can lose um, that stake. So there's a fairly chunky penalty. So mm. let's hope there is peace. But the trouble is that the, these things are done behind closed doors. There's not a great deal of transparency, and so I don't think there are any real grounds for believing that things will be that much different. Yes, I, it, this is an extremely convoluted uh, Russian tale, and I think it probably will get more convoluted before it's actually resolved. Thanks, Richard.